So in today's video, we're going to be talking about all the backcountry ski gear that I've assembled for the 2022-2023 season. Let's start with who I am and what my qualifications are. Uh, my name's Nick. I've been skiing for 10 years. I've been backcountry skiing for the past couple years. I have taken my Avalanche Level 1 course and I plan to take an Avalanche Level 2 course this winter. So I am by no means an expert. Please do not take any of this advice as expert advice. Obviously do your own research. But this video is intended for the beginner. This is intended for someone like myself a few years ago, looking to get into backcountry skiing, but just getting intimidated by all the different types of gear and, and everything that you need in order to successfully backcountry tour. So let's go ahead and uh, dive right into it. First, we're gonna go ahead and start with the skis. These are obviously the most exciting. I have got a pair of Blizzard Zero Gs. Now, admittedly, these are brand new. I'm really excited about them. Um, I got them on a really good deal. I bought last year's stock. So these are, uh, I think they're 2021 season. I don't know, I can't keep it straight, but um, these are basically to be retailed last year, but weren't sold. So these aren't the new model. This is the previous year's model. And I think I picked these up for $579 and they're very, very lightweight. So they're 1,360 grams, and yeah, they're great. They're 95 underfoot. They're a partial sidewall construction. Uh, they got a fair amount of rocker um, and not a lot of camber. So I think this will be good to keep me up on powder days. Now I ski on the East Coast, so we don't get a ton of powder days. We get a lot more icy days, which is why I only went to 95 underfoot. If I was out in Utah, Colorado, out west, where you get a lot more lighter snow, I would definitely go wider. But I think for the East Coast, one ski quiver, I think this definitely uh, checks all the boxes. So as far as bindings goes, we have the Solomon shifts. I absolutely love these bindings. Uh, I think switching between ski and walk mode is super easy. Um, so yeah, just like that. And then you put your boot in there and you clip it in to lock in. But uh, I feel confident with them in the resort uh, because I do end up skiing resort probably 25% of the time and 75% of my time I'm in the back country. So I really like how they have like a regular release mechanism uh, as opposed to like tech bindings. And for me, I decided to go with the shifts because they're a nice transition binding into the backcountry. And, you know, as I progress, I can keep these bindings and eventually I can build like a lightweight setup with tech bindings. But for now, um, when I first started, I just bought these shift bindings with um, pin boots and I put them on the skis that I had. So if you're looking to start and you really don't want to spend a ton of money getting right into it, I mean, it's not a bad idea to buy shifts with the pin boots and put them right on your skis. I would say the biggest thing to invest in first before a new pair of skis is education. So I think this is a really good setup if you're looking to kind of dabble in backcountry but don't want to dive fully into tech bindings. I think the shifts or other uh, hybrid bindings are a good option. So next, let's talk about the boots. So for boots, I have the Atomic Hawks Prime and these are awesome on the back here we've got a little lever in which we can shift to walk mode or ski mode i can use them in the resort they're not too heavy uh, i have wide feet so these actually fit pretty well for me but that's what a boot fit is going to help you figure out so i would say these are awesome ski boots go to a boot fitter but these are what i use and next we have ski poles. So these are the Solomon MTN ski poles. And these are really nice because they have a locking mechanism. So I can adjust the length of the pole, which is really nice for if you got one side lower to the hill and the other side farther to the hill. You might want one short pole on one side and one long pole on the other side. So these are really nice. Probably not necessary to start, but Definitely a, a good tool to have in the bag. And so next we're gonna talk about climbing skins. Now, these are what I used last year. Um, they were okay. They're backcountry access climbing skins. Uh, 
I did go on a really long tour up Mount Marcy. I made a video about it, so I'll go ahead and link it up here. Um, but if you wanna watch that, but these started to get really icy and I think I stepped in some water, which if you do step in water, uh, that could cause your skins to get iced up. But by the end of the day, these had almost no grip to them. So I'm actually getting a new pair of skins. I also need to get a new pair of skins because these are cut to my old skis. I got a new pair coming in the mail. Those are the uh, Contour Hybrids and I'll go ahead and put them on screen so you can see what they are. So I haven't tried them. I can't really tell you how they are. These Backcountry Access ones really weren't that great. Uh, Contour is a good brand though. So I keep all of this in this cheapo Amazon bag. Terran Way, never heard of it. I did end up taking it out west with me. Ski bags are ski bags. So for the pack, I've got a Deuter Freerider 34 liter. Uh, I love Deuter bags. I just got this this season actually, so I haven't toured with it yet, but I scoped this out last year and I've talked to some of my friends who do have this uh, and they said that they love it. I think Deuter makes really nice products. Uh, it's really, really comfortable. Deuter has like a special type of backing that they use uh, in some of their bags. And then they just, they put a lot of emphasis on like the structure of the bag. So for me, when I'm wearing this, it seems to evenly distribute all the weight. So I would highly recommend this. Uh, another thing that it has too, it has like a special compartment for all of your Avi gear, which is really cool. Um, you know, this is not the main compartment. So that's really convenient for if you actually need to access it quickly. You know, you can get your shovel and probe out fast. So um, I think this is a excellent bag for ski touring. It has a ton of features. I think Deuter makes some of the best bags in terms of weight distribution. So I'm really, really stoked to use this. Um, in combination with the bag, it has mounts for mounting your skis uh, in the A-frame carry. And in order to actually do that, you're gonna need a ski strap. So I'll make another video on how to mount your skis for people who are curious and I'll link it when it's done. But yeah, that's the pack that I have. So let's move on to Avalanche gear. So starting out, I've got the Black Diamond Quick Draw Probe. This is 240 centimeters long and it's really lightweight. I mean, probes are, you know, what they are. They've got the measurements on there, but yeah. I'm excited to use this. Uh, I used one very similar, if not the exact same one in my Avalanche training course last year. So I knew that this would be a good option. So, and next we have the Black Diamond Evac 7 shovel. I used this last year in the Avalanche course and it was really nice. Uh, it's super easy to put together. And it extends out. So you get a little length. It's got a pretty good size volume and uh, yeah, I really like this. It fits in my bag really well. So, so that's my probe and shovel, and we'll move on to the beacon. So, and for the beacon, I've got the Backcountry Access Tracker 2. Uh, this is a pretty generic beacon, but um, you know, I like it because it doesn't really have a ton of features really all it has is a on off switch here in the back, a pull to search and then push into send. So this is a very, very simple beacon. Uh, there's ways to like mark out if you're picking up one signal, you can like mark out a signal, I believe. But you know, some of the other beacons are going to have a lot more features in terms of uh, you know, you can isolate certain signals, uh, leave markers and stuff like that. But um, for someone who's sort of just getting into the backcountry and, and wanting something that's reliable, easy to use, if you ever do need to use it, I think this is a great option for you. So that's why I went with the Tracker 2. Um, I've used this before. It's very reliable, pretty easy to use. Uh, so I'm excited to finally have a beacon in my kit. Uh, it also comes with a strap so you can wear the beacon as well. So next we have a field guide that uh, my friend Tyler and Stu over at East Coast Avalanche Education put together. This is where I took my first course. I'll go ahead and link their work uh, in the description here. But uh, this just kind of gives you some examples of the different tests 
that you would do ECT column test, shear test, uh, gives you the, uh, you know, a reference point for when you're in the back country and, you know, something to help you make good decisions. So this is really awesome. Um, I always carry this with me just because. Um, another thing you might want to get that I don't have yet is a crystal card and a magnifying glass so that you can scoop up snow and look at the crystals and see whether or not they're faceting or not. A couple other things that you would probably want to get eventually is a snow saw so you can cut the columns uh, if your shovel doesn't work good enough um, and a rope so you can make um, the extended column test. So another item you'll want is a slope meter and I actually just downloaded an app on my phone and this app pretty good. I mean, it does a decent job. Uh, this is going to help you tell whether or not you're in you know, avalanche train and, and what sort of uh, aspect you're working with when you're taking notes, um, you know, and, and doing column tests and everything like that. All right, so the next few pieces of gear I don't have with me today, but we will be going over them anyways. Uh, the first piece is a helmet. I do plan on getting the Salomon MTN uh, helmet, which is a touring specific helmet. It's a little bit more expensive than your typical resort helmet, but it's a lot lighter weight. And another item is a crampon. So if you're going to be going into steep exposed terrain like Tuckerman's Ravine, you're going to want to get crampons and an ice axe as well. I haven't gotten those yet, but I will be adding those to the quiver soon. So for communication, I have these Redivis walkie talkies. One. These are nice because they have multiple different channels. They're not super complicated like most uh, uh, walkie talkies are. Uh, some of them, some of the higher end ones, you have to program and everything. Uh, I've used these before and you get really good range. Uh, they claim a few miles worth of range. I haven't gotten that far, but I've definitely gotten to like a half mile and uh, the range has held, held for that distance. So these are pretty good. Um, these are awesome for the backcountry for if you're trying to communicate. If someone drops in, well now you have to either yell or it's hard to communicate. So these solve that issue obviously, but they're not really necessary. So this next item I have yet to purchase, but I am going to get a bivy stick, which is a satellite communicator. Either that or I'll get the inReach, but I think the bivy stick's a better option. It's a little bit more affordable and the plans seem to be a little bit more uh, friendly for the hobbyist in terms of having no cancellation fees and no startup fees and credits roll over and all that stuff. But yeah, satellite communicator is definitely a good option to have. If you're just doing day trips, you really don't need one per se. They always help to have, but uh, most of the time I haven't done really any overnights in terms of skiing. So whenever I go out, I just tell friends and family where I'm going to be, when I'm going to be back <clears throat> and sort of when they should sound the alarm. But having the satellite communicator will definitely add a level of peace of mind. I'm excited to add it to my kit. I'll probably be getting that this season, but I do not have one yet. So these are two great options for you if you're in the same boat and you're looking for one as well. So next we're going to move on to the hiking essentials and then we'll do clothing last. So first you're going to want to have a physical map always. Physical maps are great because you can't rely on like all trails. You know, if your phone dies, you're SOL. All right, so next I have a lighter as my fire starter. Um, waterproof matches are also a good idea. I have those somewhere, probably in my parents' house, um, but I do gotta get those out. Um, but yeah, you're gonna wanna carry a fire starter in case you're stuck out overnight. And next you are going to have a compass with a whistle. And this has a magnifying glass, which comes in handy for looking at snow crystals. Uh, and then I have lip balm and they say bring sunscreen as well, but I don't get burned very often. So I haven't used that yet. Next, you're going to bring a headlamp with batteries. This is the black diamond spot 400. I absolutely love this headlamp. It's really, really nice. You can set the different level of brightness. It has a really good run time and it's really, really bright, but always make sure you bring extra batteries in the back country because you don't want to be stuck without a headlamp. Next, we have our multi-tool. This is just a generic multi-tool. This comes in handy for if you ever need to repair your uh, binding or anything like that. 
Some guys also bring tape and things like that to uh, repair your skis. I've got to sort of work on what my ski repair is, but you know, as I continue to go out and learn and talk to others, I'll continue to develop my uh, kit. So next item to talk about is water. So we've got a Sawyer squeeze filter. Uh, and then we've also got the iodine tablets. So either of these are gonna be pretty good. Um, I've tried to use these iodine tablets in the winter before and they don't really work very well because the water is so cold. Um, but yeah, that's where like a, a Sawyer squeeze would, would do good. I usually bring one or the other uh, just to make sure I have at least one form of water sanitation. But obviously the Sawyer squeeze is gonna be bigger, take up more space. These are gonna be lighter, easier to use. Sawyer squeeze is gonna be a lot quicker, so you're gonna be able to filter your water right away. These have a time delay on them, but they're so much smaller. So it kind of just depends on, on what you wanna use for the day, but these are my water sanitation options. Next, we have our sunglasses. We got some pit vipers. These are a good option to have. Next, we've got our medical kit. This is a pre-assembled kit. I don't know exactly what it has here, but I can go ahead and link it in here in the description so you can see what it's got. Um, but yeah, it's smart to, uh, to have medical supplies with you. And finally, you're gonna wanna bring some snacks. It doesn't really matter. Um, but usually bars are really nice. Um, Nature Valley bars, uh, cliff bars, whatever you want. And two other things you're gonna want is a tarp, so a wind shelter and a water bottle. Obviously the wind shelter, uh, you know, you wanna have that in case you end up having to get stuck overnight in the backcountry if someone gets hurt uh, and it's gonna take a while for a rescue team to get out to you. And then obviously a water bottle, you need that because you need a drink. Um, so you can use a Nalgene bottle or I use smart water bottles uh, sometimes just because they're a lot lighter weight and they're easier to get. One tip is leaving them in your pack. Uh, for whatever reason, if you leave them on the outside of your pack, like in one of those water bottle holders, they freeze a lot faster. So I don't know what kind of bro science is involved there, but uh, I was told that by one of my instructors in my Avi One course, and I have seemed to find that to be true. So that's it for the 10 hiking essentials. Uh, you should be bringing those on every hike. Those are the basics. And now that we're through that, let's move on to clothing. We have our base layers. So I've got these long sleeve wool base layers, and then I've got the long sleeve pants. Uh, so it's important to use wool because wool is the best insulating qualities. Um, these are wool ski socks. Now, these are regular wool socks. And as you can see, they're ribbed. So there's like, elastic in here and i didn't know this before last year but if you wear these in your ski boots all day it's gonna really dig into your your skin and if you do multiple days in a row it's gonna really hurt so these ski socks don't have the ribs and so they fit in your your boots a lot better so ski socks ski specific socks wool ones particularly are very good to have and next i normally wear like a running short. So these are the Patagonia shorts. They're just nice to wear, um, to have. They're lightweight, they're not a lot of material, but I wear these over my leggings. And then next, I have the quarter zip. So I really like this quarter zip because it doesn't have a hood on there um, and it's kind of just like a warm sweater. So this is nice to go under as like a warming, insulating layer. I don't always wear this, um, but yeah, this is a nice, a nice layer to have. We've got our snow pants. Now these are touring specific snow pants. These are the Outdoor Research Trail Breaker 2 men's. Uh, and uh, these are really nice because they have, uh, they've got a vent on the side. So this opens right up. So when you're wearing them, you get all that airflow in there. So this vent right here is really nice. Um, this has also got like an avalanche beacon pocket, but I don't use that because I was just told to strap it to your body. That's the best way to do it from my avalanche education uh, provider. So 
Um, so I just do that. But yeah, these, uh, I believe they do have a avalanche uh, thing in there. These aren't the most waterproof pants. So these are kind of more designed for like drier days. If you're gonna be going out on a wet day, you wanna make sure you do have some appropriate waterproofing. But as, you know, as, as far as I've used them, they've worked really well. So next we are going to move on to our jacket. So the key to ski touring and winter hiking is layering. So for jackets, I have three jackets. This is a REI puffy jacket. This is very similar to a Patagonia micro puff, but uh, this is just the REI version. I can go ahead and link this, but this is gonna be a warm jacket for days where it's not gonna be very wet, but it might be cold. Uh, so this is a really good option for that. If it is gonna be wet, you're gonna need a waterproof layer, which brings us to the Patagonia Torrent Shell Jacket. So this is a three layer hard shell rain jacket uh, and it is waterproof. Um, and I've used it a few times before and it's held up really well. So on days where it's gonna be cold and rainy, uh, but not super cold, you might uh, pair this with your puffy jacket, puffy jacket for insulation and this jacket for waterproofing. Uh, so. That's one key to ski touring and one thing that's important is having different options. So having a lightweight down jacket and then having a waterproof jacket. So, you know, if it's warm and rainy, you might just get away with just a waterproof jacket. If it's cold and rainy, but not super cold, you might get away with the lightweight puffy and the, the shell. And if it's really cold and really extreme, uh, then you're gonna want the last option. And finally, we have the REI Stormhenge. This is a down jacket, also with a shell on it. So this is gonna be for the coldest days, the most extreme weather. Uh, and so this is a really nice jacket. I've used it in very extreme conditions. So this is obviously the warmest jacket. Um, as you can see, I've got the assortment of jackets so I can mix and match based on the different needs of the day. All right, so the next item is going to be gloves. These are just your generic skiing gloves. Uh, it's important to have some lighter gloves. I wasn't able to find them, so I think I gotta order a new pair, but some lightweight like fleece gloves would be good too, in case you don't want all that insulation. You know, maybe you're on the skin track and it's a little cold, you don't want your hands freezing, but these are gonna be too warm. Having a nice intermediate glove is gonna be a good option as well. Next, we have our wool hat and we have our five panel hat. Um, I kind of just use these depending on the day. If it's gonna be cold, I might bring the wool hat. If it's gonna be a hot, sunny day, I'll bring the five panel. But yeah, these are kind of interchangeable, but good to have. All right, so finally, let's move on to camera equipment. So first, I have a Insta361R. Um, I'll go ahead and post a separate review of this particular camera. Uh, I also plan to get the GoPro Max because the GoPro Max has a lot better audio. Um, also, as a filmmaker, it just kind of helps to have these little action cams around. So I do plan to get the GoPro Max as well. Um, I have the selfie stick attachment and I also have the head mount attachment as well. So these three things are really nice for getting sort of POV shots and then the selfie stick for getting, uh, you know, selfie style shot. That is my action cam. And for, for my main camera, I have, well, just for example, today I have my A6400 on here. I normally shoot with an A7 IV. I have the Tamron 28 to 75 on here. This is my workhorse. It gets the sort of wide shots, but also gets towards the telephoto end as well. Uh, I have the Rode Micro on here for the microphone. This really ups the level of the audio without adding a ton of weight, and it's really small and packable, which I like. Um, for a tripod, I've got the Siriu AM254 uh, with the Joby uh, ball head on here. Uh, and so this is a really nice setup because this is an Arca Swiss type system. So the Peak Design clip, which we'll talk about next, clips onto the tripod. So I can take the tripod and take the camera right off of this tripod and I can clip it into my Peak Design backpack clip. So when you're hiking, 
the camera goes right into this clip. So it's really nice. This is the best setup because I found that if I don't have my camera readily accessible, I'm not gonna use it. So it's great to just have it right on your shoulder here. So you can take it right off, take your shot, clip it right back on. Okay, maybe you wanna get a tripod shot, take it off, throw it on the tripod, boom, good to go. When I first got this clip, I didn't quite love it because it felt like it was pulling all of my weight to one side of my pack. But with this Deuter pack, the way that they distribute the weight across your back, I can't even really feel like I'm wearing it. So this is a really good setup here. Also, I have a ND filter for this. This is just a Tiffin. I do recommend Tiffin. Tiffin's a great brand. This just screws right on the front here. Um, if you know anything about cameras, these are great to have. I can go ahead and make a separate video about my ski touring camera gear specifically, and I'll go ahead and link that up if I end up making it. The last piece of gear that I have is my drone. I have the Mavic Air 2S. In my opinion, this is the best bang for your buck drone. Um, here's the controller for it. So it's small, lightweight, foldable, um, all the things that you'd want for a drone that's gonna go in the back country with you. Admittedly, I have not ski toured with it yet. Uh, so I'll be trying that out this season. And mostly the reason is just because where I go, the Adirondacks, they don't allow drones. So I just don't usually bring it, um, but I have full confidence I'd be able to fit that in my pack. Oh yeah, and don't forget to bring your Bluetooth speaker so that you could piss everybody off on the trail. Just kidding, don't bring this. Um, actually don't bring this. It's annoying when people have music on the trail. So that is everything in my ski touring kit. I know there's a lot of information there, but um, I'll go ahead and create a list with links to everything that I have. Uh, I know that I probably didn't go over some of the brands and specifically what they were, um, but I'll be writing up like a blog post so you guys can reference back to that as well with links to all the different gear that I use. So I hope that uh, this video makes you realize that uh, ski touring isn't super uh, strict in terms of what you need to bring. It's pretty flexible. Um, there's definitely essentials uh, and then there's obviously what you need to ski. Um, and then there's a certain way of packing and, and layering. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you could find what works for you. Um, I think the biggest name of the game is just getting out, starting small, trying the stuff that's easy uh, and experimenting, you know, trying one thing out, you know, learning from others. Uh, and eventually, you know, you'll assemble your own kit. So I hope you guys found this valuable. If you did, let me know in the comments. It took a good amount of effort to put this video together. So, and I know that it took, you know, a decent amount of your time to watch this video. So I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you want to watch some of my actual skiing content, I'll go ahead and create a playlist and link it. Um, if you want to watch more content like this, definitely subscribe and I appreciate you watching and that's all for today. So cheers. See you on the skin track.